so what it does is it, it allows you to safely exit the building at grade, so everything's inside of here. So where are the kids going to play? So? Because if you have any two bedrooms, I, I know I asked you this before, you have to also have two bedrooms in front of families. Uh, it's not a lot of open space out here, so I'm just really worried about if the kids are just going to be in that courtyard. Well, the courtyard is a fair amount of space, actually. Okay, so yeah. where, we'll, uh, where are all the new kids going to be playing at? It should not be shadowed. It should not be shadowed since we have um, southern exposure here oh, okay. from the courtyard. Right. So we've got open space in the courtyard as well as these roof decks. Do you have any play, play equipment for the kids in those? For, for ch kid re residents, uh, children of the residents? When the community again hears about stuff like that, you'll get more support. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Sweet, and of course, we have older people up there, so we have barbecue and things like that. Uh, first, the factor. <coughs> Has anyone thought about rooftop gardens? We're still thinking through Sorry. the program up on the rooftop, but do you have a suggestion? Yeah, we've talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> You're from C&DC, right? Yes, yes, I run four rooftop gardens. Yeah. We also have four. Well, I want to go to this. You're going to plan them for us? Come look. We should talk. Publicly accessible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
trying to mimic it in any way. Um, so, yeah. In the back. Um, I have two one streets in that area. Would that um, affect the traffic because of the population increase there? So we, um, we're in the middle of a traffic study now. The one thing we've done, go back to the second really, is we've really separated the back of house, so to speak. So our, our uh, vehicular entry is on Jones here. And it's pretty common to then see your loading and um, other back of house elements next to your vehicular entry usually. But we've separated that. So we've got the one small curb cut on Jones, and then you've got, we've got our loading up here on Golden Gate. So we really try to separate that. That also means we get to open up the corner for some commercial space and then have our lobby as well on Jones. So at this point, we're not anticipating a problem. Um, also, um, since, this ho since the housing movement has happened, how many other neighborhoods have you built in? And, um, how many more are you building in after this project? Good question. Mm -hmm. I don't have the first call. We have not, this is our first project for Shorenstein Residential in San Francisco. Okay, so I have a couple questions. One is, uh, are you going to have any blue zones or white zones uh, 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 on the sidewalk? Yeah, we haven't gotten there yet. Did you, do you have a suggestion? Blue zones and white zones. Obviously, uh, you're going to have to. Not everybody's going to be wanting to park their car inside, and they're going to have to pick up people. Uh, taxis are going to have to come and whatnot. It's you know going to a lot of people. Okay. So I mean, most most residential buildings down here have white zones, at least one or two parking um, spots for the white, and there should be at least maybe two, or because you also you can also assist uh, the people over on um, uh, St. Anthony's uh, with some some blue zones because I don't know what, what they plan on doing. So we coordinate with uh, St. Anthony's, which has a senior building, and put some additional uh, blue zones in. Because again, you're giving back to the community by helping out with, uh, you know, instead of having all these damn parking blocks, parking meters, which uh, are cost prohibitive. Uh, and people do, there's a lot of people down here that have, uh, you know, uh, parking factors. So you would yeah. be okay eliminating the parking meters? Yeah. yeah, well, too, because you would have to, yeah, because that's what we'd have to if you had a white zone or a blue yes. zone. I yes. will just point out that there are two existing loading zones, uh, white zones on the street, so there's one right here where the cursor is pointing, and then also across Jones, there's existing loading zones that are currently yeah, but with in the, place. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen when you put the development up. You can change that. Every year, you have to pay for those white zones. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Well, after your development's up, how are you going to help me get back to the community? Uh, and how you assist your residents and and then the nearby neighbor. All those things. Hey, um, I got a question for Michael. Uh, as far as uh, this whole thing is, I want to know what's being put up, being built by the people. That was nothing. How about that? Uh, you got a lot of short stretches on this. Uh, a lot of short stretches, four buses, you know. And, and I was going to say, they want to observe the area. I mean, where would it park and get off at? You know, I mean, as far as how um, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, let me say, like, you know, you got pickup up service, stop up service, you know, in that type of space area, you know, and you can definitely mark that out. I mean, in areas, you know, like for the bus area, just to step off the people, they want to observe.
Uh, a quick question for the height and bulk of the building. Do, do, is that within permitted uh, zoning, or do you have to get a conditional use for the site? So, so it, you don't really need much approval from planning to proceed ahead, other than just a, the normal perfunctory yes. uh, design review That's to move ahead. I, I still say, given the disruption, disruption to the neighborhood, and it will be disruption disruptive in ways that maybe you don't intend. The more you can think about providing community benefits in the neighborhood, grocery, laundry mat, a parking, a rooftop garden, community room, stuff that really is not just for the 300 wealthy residents, but for the, poor, the poorer neighborhood around, you will get much more support for your project. Uh, otherwise, you could anticipate even in planning some opposition from the neighborhood. Uh, given that this is a poor neighborhood, and you're basically going to be seen as wealthy people, 300 wealthy plus units coming in. And so get the neighborhood on your side by giving back more than just the 12% inclusionary, which is good, and I commend you for that, but there's more that needs to be done than 12% inclusionary. Okay. I appreciate that, and I think it's an ongoing conversation. I mean, I think one of the main opportunities we have, back to the retail on Golden Gate and Jones, and I think so. Some of this could be tied into your other properties across the street uh, with the theater. I mean, so you know, so talking about busing, whatever that's already that should be planned with the other properties across the street. So we have to look at. And you never brought that up since you've been. This is a, this is a residential, and then you also have a commercial across the street with the theater. Are you, are you talking about the Golden Gate Theater? Yes. Okay, it is different ownership. But is it part of storage? Thing? Different part. Yeah. But isn't it the yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Go ahead. And that is one of the reasons why I was, uh, I was, uh, um, yeah. yeah, I'm just going back to my other question again. Is it the city is recommending a more modern appearance? Or is it because it's more cost prohibitive to do it? I mean, we have some beautiful old buildings in the neighborhood. And, and new right. ones going up, there seems to be like almost a clash between, and, and there's something beautiful about, you look at the Hotel Herald just across the street here. And I don't know if it's just so cost prohibitive to do, to do those these days. But some of the modern structures going in uh, really do take away some of the, the beauty of what yeah, yeah, sure. So I just wanted to hear your comment on that. Yeah. Is the city pushing more modern structures? No, there. I mean, it's kind of twofold. The, it's, we are not a designated a historic site like the 1072 uh, market next to us, but mm -hmm. it is the historic theater district. Mm -hmm. And the element, you know, it's always a little amorphous with the district, right? If there's a building, you can sort of emulate what, what the building represented originally. But when it's a district, you're, you're sort of taking your cues from your adjacent really the cue that the planning department encouraged us to run with was this Chicago style window. Um, because? Which we, because they thought that was representative of this design. It does it really design-wise. And it's a be architectronica, your, your company does beautiful work. And I've seen this stuff in Miami, it's wonderful work, but it doesn't fit into our neighborhood design-wise at all. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful but non-integrated design. And doesn't doesn't re respect our theater district design aesthetics at all. There's no no tie in. So to be considered. We'll definitely consider it. Submit it for your consideration. So um, the the question that that was asked how how many other places you built in the city? Because I know it's trickling down to this area, and it's going to be gentrified because there's they're not having too many more places to build. So that's that's why I asked the question about how I mean how many more places you build in other neighborhoods. So, and I know it's trickling down to the Tenderloin area now, where they're going to have to start using up some of these parking spots. So, okay. well, again, uh, and I think that the other point is uh, again you're basically removing a possible open space site that this neighborhood badly needs that we're again going to lose. Um, you know, uh, we uh, a couple years ago, uh, when we started to see that all these uh, parking lots go one by one by one, 
we're saying to ourselves, this, as a neighborhood, we need to plan on these open spaces to be utilized uh, better for our community, and they're not because of the, every, every one of them are being developed mm -hmm. instead of being uh, left open for open space. Again, hence, we, uh, we're losing uh, any possibility of uh, finding open space. Maybe you want to uh, my question is, well, you also suggested for suggesting to get back to the community. Um, Wi-Fi is very difficult to depend on because of the tight climate with other historical buildings. Do um, you guys plan on uh, helping some of the Wi-Fi towers, help get back to the community? Because Wi-Fi is very, very, very badly needed in this community. Um, we haven't gotten there yet in terms of a Wi-Fi tower. Um, we actually have gotten some feedback that we shouldn't do the Wi-Fi tower. Um, no, no, that was uh, no, that was uh, cell phone. Okay. That was, you're mixing the two. Why oh. would be a rice community benefit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, okay. Because yeah. you made the plan. I, I said cell phones. phones. I didn't say Wi-Fi. Modifications. Are <laughs> so, well, you guys a new building coming up? We've got yeah. enough radioactive stuff going on down here. I think it will reach my building. I have to put my feet in the surface. <laughs> <laughs> you're 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 right. Right. If you had transmitters, you're right. 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 you uh, it would be a nice community benefit. Okay. Openly okay. available Wi-Fi yeah. and, and enhancing what's oh, already on market. Right. Uh, they pay in the back. Oh, say, what you the two antennas? That way you have a light plan service and a cell phone service. That way you can, because the antenna we have now, supposedly, is way out of, I think it's out of whack. Yeah, so, yeah. Because you try to make phone calls in certain areas. Yeah, exactly. Office, office. Yeah. All the way around. It's required. And so so you're, you're, you're putting up 